Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bulldozer Investing. Today is February 2nd, 2021. It is 4.01 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Um, we'll go ahead and begin our analysis. We have a long list today. I requested the followers to um, put up some names that they would like to um, see me review and chart. So we're going to try to do maybe one or two minutes each, and I'm going to try to be as fast as I can and not get off the topic this time. Um, as you can see on VIX right now, it is on the on the daily. It is sitting at the bottom of the cloud support and the 20-day moving average. Um, let's take a look at the hourly. Hourly is extended to the downside. It looks bearish. It broke underneath the cloud. Um, the previous top right here and the bottom right here seems like it could support, but the nine-day moving nine-day moving average is acting as a resistance. I think um let's zoom out a little bit on the daily i think that on the daily what i'm seeing is for vix to come back up let's take a look at the macd um not that bad i think vix can have a bounce from here i'm not sure i haven't seen amazon earnings yet we'll take a look but the um, 20 day or the worst case 50 day moving average will be a support for vix and the bounce will be more violent than ever uh, and we can draw a new trend line coming back from here. Okay, so this will be our trend line. Okay. So for for me right now, we'll go ahead and delete the. Um, so the bullish scenario, the trend uh, had failed. So we're gonna go ahead and delete all of this. And what I see so far is this, and we're gonna zoom in for everybody to see it. As you can see, this is um, descending wedge, and we might see the 20-day moving average as a support on VIX. So let's go ahead and go on SPY. Uh, as mentioned the other day, I said SPY can go up as high as 382. It went up a little higher than I thought it would which is totally normal, but we're inside the box. And I said, we're, we topped the box. I tweeted, we topped above the box. So make sure you take cautions. This is a pretty bullish candle, actually. Um, good support on the 50-day moving uh, or the 50% Fibonacci level, which is 376.97, which I said that it would be very critical. It acted as a resistance the day before. Now it's acting as a support. We'll see what happens from there. We're out of no man's land. I think um, the reversal from here, let's delete all of this stuff right here. Uh, let's delete the boxes because we're done with them. Um, what I see here is let's do a retracement, get the top and get the bottom. It went well past above the 61.8 on the retracement. It went above and closed it above the um, nine day moving day, nine day moving average. So it seems to me like SPY can go up and try to retest and close this gap. Now, we don't know how Amazon earnings are going to be. Uh, maybe they have already uh, called it. Let's take a look. Amazon after hours is up. And we'll go ahead and quickly do Amazon. I'm not going to do a technical analysis. I just want to see what happened on the uh, five-minute chart. Um, it's not determined yet. It went down and up. So the downside we talked about, the 32.67 level, it hit, went above. Now it's, I, I don't know what it's doing. Um, currently, I don't want to speak of, so right now, 0%. As you can see, the close price and the after-hours price is pretty much about the same level. So I don't know. It's just like Microsoft, it, what, what's going to happen? Like, are they going to go up and fall down? Or just like Apple, that had a great earnings and it just didn't you know, pick up. We'll see what happens. To the upside, we talked about 3581. Let's see if it gets there. But I think tomorrow we might see um, some volatile action. Okay? Let's get back to our topic and review the ticker names that we've um, noted. So next up is QQQQ. Um, it broke. So QQQ is on a bullish run so it broke above the channel that we spoke it, it's way above the nine day moving average um it could test the previous highs so let's go ahead and mark that up uh, right here 
So let's see how that does. Are we going to go back and hit and come back? Or are we going to break above for the new all-time highs? Um, the trend is your friend. So there you go. If we do break above, you can uh, go ahead and uh, you know, test this out to see how far it can go. And I think on the FIB levels that we drew the other day, I did mention that um, we might see 340s on the upside. So let's take a look. Yeah. So the maximum bullish scenario will be 344. Um, just like SPY, it just gapped up over the 61.8 and finished above the nine-day moving average. So I would say that everything on the indexes looks bullish, but I don't trust these violent spikes. Okay. So we'll see what happens. As you can see, sometimes it gap up and go and then go like that or gap up and go and then just slowly melt away. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what February is going to bring besides volatility. I do like this rounding bottom. Um, just for everybody to see it, I'll go ahead and take a drawing off of it. You can see the rounding bottom here, so it's good. If we come back and retest this bottom, it's still bullish. As I mentioned, we're looking for a cup and handle maybe and then just shoot up. So we'll see what happens. But QQQ looks bullish. Again, volatility will kill you because VIX looks like it's been down and beaten down and it might bounce off from the 20-day moving average. Okay. Let's go to Apple. I said the other day, don't trust Apple. Just watch my video yesterday. Um, I don't know what minute it was, but I said, don't trust Apple. I said, even if it could hit 137 and fill this gap, and exactly that's what it did. It's still under the 90 moving average, um, above the 20 on the daily. I just don't see anything bullish on Apple yet, uh, besides the fact that it's above our yellow box and it might get a support within it. Um, but I'm not positioned in Apple yet. Doesn't mean it's a bad stock. Doesn't mean that I'm not bullish. I am bullish and my target is, um, you know, 180, 190, well above. It's just that currently if we look at the swing trading, I am not, as you can see, it's in the red cloud, but I'm not too confident yet for the short term. So we'll see what happens with Apple. Again, I am still staying away from Apple. Of course, not a bad stock. Of course, that technicals are not broken, but I like to get in at a perfect time where I can score 800%, 400% on my options calls. Okay, So that's what it is with Apple, and we are fully aware that, I mean, you should be fully aware that we are bullish on Apple. It's just that I'm talking about the uh, short term. Um, actually, looking at the MACD on the four hours and the stochastics, things are good. Um, RSI needs to pick up a little and it needs to uh, break above the cloud. There's a cloud top, cloud bottom resistance clearly as you can see on the four hours. We are forming a mini flag. It could be a bear flag. Let's see how the nine day moving average supports on the four hour on Apple. So I didn't see this four hour chart, but to me the resistance at 135.84 seems like a, something that it needs to you know, get over. Then we can, if it does beat over uh, the next level as we draw here, would be 139.81. AMD. Um, AMD seems like it's on a clear trend uh, setting up for the next run. This is a very bullish trend I've been talking about lately, the dragon formation. Um, it's effective when it works, of course. So it's on a pen, it's, it's doing again descending wedge or descending pennant, descending triangle, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to take a quick picture screenshot of it and I'm going to show you how I see things here. You see the neck, the head, you have the first leg, hump, the second leg, and then it's flagging. So this is a very powerful formation that we've seen in NEO before and it went up pretty high. So I don't know what this level is. We'll take a look at it, but I think we're definitely hitting this 161.8. Um, I just have to take a look at it. Seems like the cloud bottom right here has been a good support on the daily. So the cloud bottom right here has been a good support, which is 85.78. It went down a little more. I think this is the 20-day moving average. 20 day moving average on the daily chart. Um, Nine-day moving average can act as a resistance, which is 917. So watch out for that. Um, sorry if I'm going too fast because I have to cover a lot of names today. 
It hit the 100% FIB, so that's the first thing, 88.93 first resistance. The second resistance will be 9.23 around there. Um, target goal is will be, um, so let, let's go ahead and redraw these FIBs. Okay. Let's go ahead and do something like this. Get the bottom, the top, and the most recent bottom here. So the extension tells me that we could easily hit somewhere here. So it could we could be to test the hundred dollar area. Um, what I'm going to do is delete the bear scenario because we did we did basically um, what would be the lowest one? Let me draw that too. So the lowest support will be here. To me, the nine day moving average seems like a or the twenty day moving average seems like a good support for now. Um, if you were to draw another extension, the the neck, the other bullish extension would be something like this. Uh, get the low, the high, and the double bottom, which which this extension has completed its run at 161.8. So this this right here, this move, this double double bottom, um, had completed its um, extension to 161 to be exact. So the target is done. Um, of course, so we need to get rid of that FIB. That's why I deleted the previous charts. Only thing we want to look at is this run right here. So from this run all the way to here, so somebody can also do the extension from a little higher here and lower your target. That's also fine. So we can do something like that as well, okay? Which is fine. I like to be conservative, so let's just start the run from here. That's fine. Um, that's there. That's all there is to it. So again, the levels to watch. Um, 83 could be the lowest point right now. The cloud bottom support is there with the 20-day moving average on the daily chart. Uh, first target is 95. The second target is 98. It could go and test out the $100 area. Um, blink. Um, blink right now seems it. It did have a pretty good run during the day after its low of the day. However, um, what happened here is a lot of people thought it was going forever, but what happened here was that it just basically got stuck on the nine day moving average. So it is still running technical. It is still running in wave. So let's see if it, let's see this extension, if it completed it. Um, yeah, it hit the 100%. So that's what, that's what happened. Now it's on a retracement. Um, this name could be very volatile and eat your patience away. Um, let's go ahead and we have to get back from today's lows. And this could very well be a double bottom. Hopefully it is because um, a lot of people are in this name that I know and they want you know, to make money from. So we'll have to readjust our evaluation here. Um, reason why is because I, I just thought, honestly, I just thought that... Um, we would hold the 20 day moving average. So my FIB extension was off of the 20 day, which did do a great job by the way, and it still managed to close above the 20 day. So the 20 day moving average right here is sitting at uh, 48, actually, no, it's it's right underneath it. So it's pretty, um, it's a red candle. So the close price is underneath the um, uh, simple moving day average. So right now it's just struggling to reclaim. So we might be living this right here um, just stick with it for a couple days. We want to see the rounding bottom and then an entry to the upside. So right now, as you can see, the previous, you know, previous flaggings. So it's it's always the same thing with this name. It just eats your patience away. Um, it just keeps on flagging to the downside and then rips open. I, I mean, to, to be honest with you, it is totally normal for a Blink to just run up the $72, $73 area. It's just that we need to be patient. Uh, right now, only thing I'm watching for is if we can still hold a couple days. As I mentioned yesterday that the MACD and um, let me auto zoom. So the MACD, it needs way more time. We, we, need, um, we need MACD to curl up a little bit. I don't see that happening, but the previous flags right here is extended. So it just, um, and this, this move right here, the M formation, the triple bottom, if it fails. So I have to talk about the bear um, side of the story as well. Um, let me go ahead and draw this. So this right here needs to hold. OK, 
Okay. So whatever this level is, let's take a look. Around forty-two dollars. It needs to hold forty-two, because then you would have a triple bottom, and then it could go ahead and test the lowest. The bear side right now would be thirty-one dollars. I have to speak in both ends of the story so that you know the risk and reward. Okay. Um, bingo. B N G O. Bio. What was it? B N G O. Bio. Nanogenomics. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, right now, it was about to do a bearish crossover on the MACD, and it's still bullish right now. Um, and we mentioned it on our Twitter. We mentioned it on our, I think, I didn't chart. Back then, I didn't chart it on, um, when I tweeted it, I think, let me, let me pull up the chart on BNGO right here. Um, so I tweeted this. I said, every time BNGO does this flag, and it just rips to the upside, um, Guys, I didn't tell anybody to buy puts when I said it reached our target. When it reaches our target, it doesn't mean it needs to stop there. Okay, So it reached our target to the cent, of course. As I always say, we're always lucky, and we're always lucky to the exact point of the cent. So it might have went over like near $13. This doesn't show the extended hours on the candles because it's a free version. It only shows the market hours. So right now... It's it's still you know struggling to get above the 50 uh, fib right we we drew and acting as a resistance. I do see the 50 what is it 1207 as resistance and it could retest the 1269. However, um, if we were to re I'm sorry I kind of switched chart charts on you guys but um, this could be a support and this could be okay. There you go. So let's go ahead and fix this up a little. There you go. So if it goes down, look for the, um, what is this? 20-day moving average as a support or near 1130s just to close the gap and then just push up higher. Um, let's see, this it needs to break above this. It, basically, this is an ascending wedge, and it's, it's usually a bearish scenario. So you do want to break above this and just hit the target of 1469. So that's BNGO. I didn't put second or third target. Um, it's like, you know, our target is hit. That's it. Um, as you can see, I mean, the chart is same. Let me just do an hourly on this. Uh, the chart is always same. When we do an hourly, I mean, I could I could be a couple cents off here and there, but pretty much it hit our top 90 moving average, has been uh, supportive, and it kind of, you know, lost it there. Um, if it does retest the cloud top at 1098, I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't think it'll get there. Where it will get to is right here. Worse, I'm explaining the bear scenario right here. Okay? So where it could get is this cloud top right here, okay? um, which is about 1148, which I mentioned on the previous chart on the uh, channel that I drew. So we'll see what happens. I think it can push towards 14, and that would be my sell area. If you're long in the name, of course, hold it long. I wouldn't really say you know this is a bearish stock. It's, it's a bullish stock. I like the technology. It's just that it... You know, are you in for the long term? How long can you hold the pain? What is your average? And it's all, it's all sort of uh, you know, questions there that I can't really judge for you. Um, let's go ahead and look at, let's see, CCL, Carnival Cruise Lines. I think I did this before. I don't want to, re I don't want to reiterate myself. Um, I know some stocks are bullish on the airline sector, and it might push the sector on the cruise lines. Seems like right now, so what I can say is that the cloud bottom was a pretty good support. So 1823 area was a good support, filled the gap right here. Um, in order for me to be bullish on this name, I need to see, first of all, to break above the 90 moving average and this trend and the cloud top. I know you're going to say, well, that's about $19 to $21. That's like lots and lots of percentage. Now, if you want to... If you want to risk it going in right now, it could go and retest $18, or it can go ahead and test $21. Though That is the range that we're talking about. So the range is, let me square this thing. Uh, the range we're sitting, trading range we're sitting is here. Max loss would be about $18.23. Max gain as of this moment would be $21.42. I'm talking about short-term swings. I'm not talking about monthly. I don't, when, I, when we zoom out on this name, as we mentioned before, it's sitting on a pennant, um, and I can't tell if it's going to go ahead and hit the, and close the gap around 39, or if it's going to go back and retest the 7.8. Uh, 
Um, only thing I can tell you about this name is that it's been diluted by 100%. So just because it was $50 before, it doesn't mean that it can be $50. That would be $100 on the previous shares. So right now at 25, 25 something or $24 that it was before, it already basically reached $50. It was just diluted. Okay? So you got to do some math. Um, reading the chart is, of course, uh, another story of things. And you can easily, let me take a picture, and you can easily say, this is the weekly chart, by the way. Uh, just looking at this chart, you can say, well, is it forming a cup and handle? Yeah, it is. So just saw that, right? But again, as I saw, as I said, I drew a trend line here. It needs to break above, and it'll retest. It'll retest this level, okay, the previous top. So just watch out on that. I am not in or I don't own any travel or you know, cruise lines, any any of those names. Um, do I recommend? Maybe it can go and push up the $20, but again, it needs some type of news and events, okay? Uh, fundamentally, I, I don't know where it's going to go to. Uh, CLSN, guys, I can't chart these every day because it's not going to change in a single day. So I've also um, charted this thing. Um so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a screenshot and just do a rough sketch. So here you see a rounding bottom. Here you see a rounding bottom. But the issue here is that the second rounding bottom has been broken down a little. So you got to watch out. If you want to be in this name, you want the cloud to be green. This is Ichimoku cloud. And you want to stay above the cloud. Okay? That's when you want to get in because it will eat your patience away. So as you can see, there's a trend here, right? The top here. And there's a rounding bottom. Now, to the upside, it can go tremendously to the upside. But I don't know what the company does. I don't know what their you know, pipeline is. I just can't recommend anything that I am not sure of because I would be, you know, I would be basically, I mean, no offense, but I would be a ba basically a guy, uh, a blind guy giving, you know, directions to an address I can't see how am I gonna tell you right so all I can do is draw the current scenario uh, just because I don't know this name and their pipeline and the medical names require a lot of due diligence so anything can happen this looks bare if, if you have a descending triangle this is usually um, I would a lot of people so let me do a couple more drawings just to explain you some technicals and then I'm going to go on to the next thing. There's two kinds of triangle. There is an ascending one and then there is a descending one. So when, when you are doing, so the top is flat and you're going up, right? So this price action is higher lows and it's usually bullish. When you have a descending one, you have lower highs, lower highs, and then go bearish. Okay? So this to me, again, I don't want to scare you. I don't know what the pipeline is. This to me seems like it's a bearish pattern on the technical side. Now, I don't know. Again, med medical names can be very surprising. It might not sometimes fit the technical. So this is probably going to be the last time that I'm doing this name. Um, and just memorize the chart. Take a picture of it because... There's nothing that I can conclude about this every single day. There's no action on it. Okay? Uh, Corsair was a name that I recommended a couple weeks ago. It did had a nice action, and then it just dropped, uh, and it's probably sitting at my recommendation. On the hourly, it's on a big, fat red cloud. On the daily, it's totally opposite. It looks bullish. So rather, I would say that if you want to play this name, let's go ahead and delete all these. If you want to play this name, uh, play it so that you don't worry about losing the amount of money you put in. So put in the amount you're willing to lose and give yourself a time. Do not put options into it. Do not put you know, too much money into it. Just enough so that you can do a long-term investment. To me... This is a long-term investment. I will not, if I own this name, I would not be watching it every day. Okay. Uh, I'm just doing another 
trend line here. Yeah, this would be appropriate. And then what kind of action would I be uh, on the Corsair? What kind of action would I be waiting for? This is a clear trend line right here. So next move will be up to here, maybe to fill the gap and we'll look at the price. So let's take a look at the price. So you want to look at this area of 4550s to 5650 area, okay? Um, first, I think the the first resistance will be right here, which is the cloud top, okay? Which is 40, what is it? 4073, okay? That's the first resistance. If it breaks above the cloud, then you're looking for 4550 to 46 bucks. Again, a name that you should hold for longer term, not as a swing trade. Um, DraftKings had, of course, I mean, this was expected, um, you know, Super Bowl, hello, earnings are coming up also at the end of the month. Um, to me, my target was always 68.92, so my target never changed. In fact, because I, I don't know what it, what it was, um, Kathy Wood got in the name. I, I think that's what it was, the news that pushed it up. I'm not sure what it is. It can come and retest the 56.91, 57 area. That's totally fine. But my overall target always has been 68.92, and I'm not going to change my mind on that. Now, if you want me to do a fresh extension, sure. Um, let's go ahead and fix our box. So the box right now will stay 68.92 to 70.28. Um, I'd say that your first um, resistance the real actual resistance will be um 6253 notice that um the 61.8 was a nice support today okay now if it falls back down to 56 dollars as mentioned before 57 56 area that's fine because that's where your fib stands um i believe that it could run up the 6253 in the shorter term side and then maybe around earnings day um it could go as high as 68 to 70 okay that's DraftKings. Um, Ford. So Ford had a decent run. It's it's acting very technical. However, the MACD and Stochastics need some time. And this is a name that you can't really trade. You have to own it for a couple of years and then, you know, get nice gains on it. And if you see a rip like this on Ford, you sell and you go away. Obviously, because you're not going to get these rips so often. Now, as you can see, this fib that we drew was always spot on perfect. The bounce was there. The protection, the resistance, and the support was there. I think it's struggling to make it out of the 90 moving average. I would give this name a rest um, just because I've not, I, besides 2009 recovery, I've not seen Ford like do things like this because of this electric thing. And I, I mean, like they're probably, you know, gaining from the EV sector stuff, but the upside, if it rips, uh, next upside levels will be, uh, I'll tell you, um, high liquid of name guys this you'll you'll always you know make have no trouble selling i i don't know how its options are um let's go ahead and give the uh and it looks like it basically ripped the flag and it's going higher but the 9 day moving average again look at that some people use you know emas if you're using smas i do 9 20 uh, 50, 100, I don't do 200 unless I'm doing like long-term supports on indexes. So this looks pretty good. Um, the support here that you want to look at is the gap, bottom of the gap. Okay. So the support is 1086. If it loses, it can go as low as 1023. To the upside, I, the first target would be 1222. Uh, F cell, I think we covered F cell and um, plug like last week. Let's see how our um, strategy has not changed. 90 moving average has been pretty supportive. The 50 uh, fib, 50 percent fib has been very supportive, and we see from the body of these candles that the actual resistance has been 21.98. A day. Let's see this. If we have a day. That we gap up and the lowest point would be 2190. That would be bullish. My next target will be 2614. Um, and then max will be 3287. The downside would be around this support. I remember I said it needs to go above, break above this. 
If it falls, it would be basically 1817, which is the 20-day moving average. So upside, maximum 32, um, short-term target 26. The resistance will be 18. I don't have a buy or sell recommendation on this. Um, yeah, you have the cup and handle to the rip. It'll it'll go higher, but these names, you know, I, I'm not I'm not dissing them, but it's like for me, you know, it, to to me, it's like a missed opportunity. I would have loved to get in at two or six or eight. For me, at this point, I I need to find another stock. But if you're in it and you're holding it long, uh, those are the lows. Okay? Maybe it's fifty dollars stock. Maybe it's going to be hundred. I don't know. I just don't. Um, I just can't. That's just me. You know. Some people have rules, and that's my rule. Okay? Um, Fubo is a name that I am in hundred percent plus margin. Um, it's it's not my actual account. It is the um, uh, journey account that we've been doing the videos on and trying to maximize our profits. So. Um, I'm not recommending anybody to go into one single stock with 100% margin. Um, that's not how you invest. So MACD needs some time. It needs to do some curling work. Stochastics is ready. RSI is picking up. Guys, the volume on this right now, I'll show you, it's half the volume from yesterday. So if you look at Fubo's volume is 20. It was like 45 something yesterday. Um, as I mentioned what, let's take a look at um, Amazon and see what's going on. Ah, it's flat. I knew it was going to be. It's just op premium options, premium meeting. So exactly. Let's see Google. Uh, Google kind of is up about like 90 bucks, not 100 bucks almost. Yeah, more than 100 bucks, 120 bucks. So Google must have had good earnings. Um, we'll see how it follows up tomorrow. Anything can happen tomorrow. On the other side of things, let's go back to Fubo. Fubo Fubo has, remember what I said yesterday. All right, we broke above, but remember, I have I have always talked about the bearish and the bullish scenario. My expectation was that we would hit at least 56.91 on the 4 4 a.m. Uh, you know session. We were we were more than you know we were more than above 54 dollars. That's the uh, before uh, before hours. Okay, extended hours. Now. What did I say yesterday? If you look at the video, I said I don't want to sound sour, but we could very well go back and test 48. What happened? Well, people got scared because we got down below 48, but this stock can go like 2% down on a you know, 50,000 volume. Um, it's heavily shorted. Of course, there's going to be manipula manipulation. Nine-day moving, nine moving average on the hourly seems like a resistance right now, and the clock top has been up support now what do i see looking at the hourly picture very clear picture here guys very bullish chart again just because something is bullish i mean things can turn around on this general market direction um or short attack whatever right so here stochastics is ready on a crossover macd i believe it's going to go down more so we might see you know support on the 50-day moving average it might take a dip down to 47s again um, until it curls up and the stochastics curl up, that's that's where we're going to move up the next upside. Okay, so the RSI is okay. Stochastics is ready. We're waiting on the MACD on the hourly. I have to look at the daily. So this is just short term swing. But what is more of the obvious side here is that a huge cup and handle. Okay, now if this plays out. Um, Fed Killings had said that um, 50 is the you know very critical point here. It is for a reason because if it rips, it's going to complete the cup and handle. Um, another formation that I have been talking about and maybe not a lot of people know about is the dragon formation that we spoke of. So here you go. Complicated W, the flag here, and this is usually a bullish sign. But again, we need patience. So let's take a look at the four hours. Four hours, um, the internals are okay. What I mean by internals is stochastics, you know, um, RSI and MACD. Um, again, the flag, um, 90 moving average has been a resistance on the four hours. 
Um, it could come down to as low as uh, 4630s and hit the bottom and then rip. Um, this you will need. So in this chart, the four hours, this looks more of a definite cup and handle more than a W dragon formation. However, if we do break tomorrow and we manage to close above 51 or 52, that will be a very bullish sign. The next resistance will be at 56.91. Now, just because of FUBO, I can't get out of Robinhood. As soon as we hit, I'm not saying sell it, but I'm just saying I'm going to sell my margin and everything. I'm going to probably sell my full position at 56.91. Transfer the money to my bank and then go to Fidelity. Because I can't, or maybe just sell my margin and transfer the common stocks, but I know Robinhood is going to give me trouble on that. So I just want to cash out, transfer to um, Fidelity. Um, on that note, I think we will probably test the, the previous high last week on Wednesday. So would it be a coincidence if we rip high and it would be another Wednesday? Or would it be Thursday? I think that was, what, what was it, Wednesday? No, that's Thursday. So would it be a coincidence if on Thursday we had another, you know, $57 area? That would be pretty sweet, okay? Now let's go to the next uh, stock, Fiverr. I believe this is an ADR. I'm not sure, but I think it's based off of Israel if I miss, if I miss, be mistaken. Um, ADRs are something usually that I'm very cautious on. If it is what I think it is, uh, I haven't been touched did not touch the stock for a while. This looks bullish. The internals look great. The MACD is about to curl up on this is the daily. Stochastics already cross, crossed over. I believe this is a double bottom formation. And I don't know the company's, you know, financials are waiting for news. This is definitely the levels you should watch. The cloud top, of course. I'm going to go ahead a little lower and touch the cloud bottom here. And then you can look at the previous highs and over. Um, if earnings come out great, you can take a look at the 356 level. I believe that it is a bullish case. I believe the chart looks bullish. And I hope that we're not wrong. Sometimes, you know, the setup is there. Sometimes, you know, everything is right and it just doesn't work out, you know. And it also broke the downtrend. Very good support off of the cloud top. So everything that I'm looking for is there. I'm going to fix this trend line. So everything that we have been looking for a bullish scenario is there. Only thing it needs to do is cross over this line, trend line, um, and you're it. So you're, you're, you're going to take off and, you know, you could easily hit the uh, 356 level. But again, it all, I think, is going to depend on the um, earnings. Now, if you do want to do a pitchfork, I can do that really quick. I'm not sure um, how that's going to work out. No, I need to fix this pitchfork. Uh... I think this is as close as we could get um, on the pitchfork timing. Again, this might not happen, and it could happen. This is something that a uh, pitchfork prediction, guys, and it could, you know. So the area that I'm guessing, give it July. July, August time, it could be 384 to 356 range. So actually what I would like to do is just extend this box and delete this. Make the box thicker so that it, you know, touches the end of the line. And there you go. So this is, this would be a very long-term summer swing trade. It could very well... In the short term, I believe 296, 300 will be okay for this. But the earnings, I don't know how that's going to go. GSM, uh, don't know about this company. It did have a pretty hard rip. 
on I don't know what kind of news. It's hard to chart these, so I'm going to go to like 30 minutes or when you see a rip like this, you want to make sure the MACD rests. MACD cr crosses back up. Stochastics is almost ready. RSI is still, you know, on the negative divergence. So what I would like to do is this. On the hourly, if you lose this trend, then watch out. Uh, your support after, if, if it loses this line, would be the first support, of course, will be right here, the cloud bottom, okay? Um, where could it go next? Again, I don't know why this came up or went up in the first place. So if it's a medical, um, you know, biotech, bio, um, tech, if it does have a great invention, I don't know if it has a COVID, you know, COVID related stock. I don't know. What I can say is that it could go up as 4.3 or 406. Again, this is on the rip side. Everything can turn around and go back down to, you know, 248. I don't know what's happening with the stock. It's a hot name. It's 20% up. I, when something is up, I just want to make sure the trend line is there and it holds. And I want to make sure the MACD, you want to give some time so that the MACD, the buying volume is there. Um, let's take a look at the four hours. So... On the four hours, this candle looks like a strong sell candle, the volume. On the daily, I just can't understand the volume bars here. It looks like the first day rip has a good volume. Let's see if I can extend this. Yeah, the buy and the sell is about the same amount. I just don't know. Like, If you know the company, fine. I just, I, I just give you the levels on the hourly. And it's very hard to do technicals on these names, but I look for 406, 430, and 508 on the support, uh, $3 to be exact, and then 248 okay? Um, let's go ahead and see Helion. This is a stock that I've already covered because one of my best friends have been bugging me all day or all two last two, three months. He's been watching these, what I call them, monkeys oh, i don't want to call them monkeys that would be um disgracing the monkey population what i call them clowns i'm sorry about the clowns i think they're you know these people that go on have a little background chart from youtube chart on google search and say to the moon you know helion is a hundred dollar stock and then we have naive friends that buy into these things and then they're caught in at 26. he told me when this was 26. i told him it's a bear flag it, it will have a sub, first support will be around, you know, $18 and then it could go as low as 15. He laughed at me. And then look at this loss from $27 to freaking $15. That's a huge loss. And now he's back holding. Now, I don't know the company. Um, apparently some, I don't know, is it Walgreens or some companies testing their, you know, trucks. Um, the truckers have mentioned that, yes, they get some power from the truck, but then again, um, we have not seen a report on the gas saving or the uh, consumption part, right? So they're happy about the performance of the car, but what's going on as, you know, the whole intention is, you know, eco-friendly. Tesla is making a truck, so, and they're just kind of like Excel, you know, what Excel is doing on the medium-sized trucks. These guys are doing like heavy, big trucks. Now, why I drew these circles? You see a circle here, right? Rounding bottom. Okay. Um, what I would say is that this is a support. Now, if it loses this right here, what I draw, draw on this horizontal line, and this uh, curling you know, circle, if it loses, it's going to go and fill this gap right here. Sorry for sounding so bearish, but I got I to gotta tell you guys a couple things. When you see... When you see a curling support, that's a good sign. The issue here is that there's a huge gap on the downside. And then it clearly got rejected off of the cloud bottom. I don't see any signs of bullish activity. Um, I'm just sorry. Like I, this stock can go as high as 21, 25. And maybe worst case, just fill this gap or not worst case, I'd say, I'm not a bear, so why would I say worst case, I'd say the best case, is that 
Um, it can go as high as 23 sevens, okay? But I don't have a confirmation on my um, chart, at least on the Ichimoku for the long-term side of it, that, you know, stock is doing good. It's not. I, I like the curling bottom, which is promising, but they better not lose 16.4 or 16.14. You get what I'm saying. Like, don't, don't follow these clowns that have no chart knowledge. They just go ahead and read a couple articles and news reports and then tell you to the moon. Now, I can tell you one thing. Let me delete this. If you're long in this name, I don't know how long you can hold. There's a huge pennant, okay? You, you see how I connected the bottom and then this? It's underneath the pennant. It's trying to get in. So it's either going to squeeze out of here and it needs to break above the cloud and the cloud needs to turn to green, but it would be very bullish above 21. It's, it's, it could be, it could cause a, you know, huge squeeze. That's fine. You can even turn this bottom uh, to something like this. It's not completed, but you know you can you can do something like this. If it goes down, you know, 11, fill the gap right here, then fine. But if it breaks, if it manages just without dropping, if it manages to stay on this red line, the red line we have drawn here, and then just break above yet. Yeah. But again, I I don't see any momentum in the stock yet. You'll you'll see like day trading, maybe like it goes up like 10 percent, then goes down and then picks up. 2%. I don't know about that for long term. I don't see any signals. Okay. I don't want to, I don't want to be one of those fools, you know, trying to get like followers and have no technical knowledge about stock market or trading or the company itself. And they're just like, you know, screwing you guys to get money from their followers and advertisements. This channel has nothing to do with money, income, anything. So I'm just trying to be honest here. Okay. Lazar. This was another, um, recommendation from me and it's been volatile and if you probably bought where I th I bought initially um, you're basically break even most likely so here in this range of trading that's where you're you know not 20 day and nine day that's where it's going back and forth I believe that this stock is going to be a long-term hold for the EV sector play now, this is the question, right? Let, let's delete all of this because there's so many things here. So this is the thing, right? We've been saying um, Hillion. Well, I have Lazar. I'd rather invest in Lazar than Hillion. Don't try to be cheap and buy the cheaper stock, but have absolutely no clue about what the company does. That's what people do. They're like, oh, you know, Helion dropped from uh, 57 to, you know, $57 or 60 bucks to um, 17. It's a must buy. Well, while that dropped, everything else picked up. Tesla went up. You know, Neo went up. Blink went up. All these names went up. So why did this not went up? Because it was a pump and dump scheme. Sorry if I'm offending you if you own the name. I, I'm not trying to speak negative to you. I, I'm just mad at those YouTubers that try to get these people into it. So there's a pennant still. Um, the chart is good. I've, say, I've said this a couple of times. The worst case scenario is 28.94, the bottom of the cloud. Um, this is a long-term buy and hold type of scenario. Invest what you're afford to lose. Actually, any investment, right? Besides if you're doing like Apple, Amazon, um, invest in, invest in these names as much as you're willing to lose and just buy it and forget it a couple years um, ultimate target on this one is 56 bucks that's my ultimate bullish scenario the bearish scenario I told you $28 okay Neo um, been watching this carefully I think it still needs time before its next move but I do think this yellow box that we've drawn has been pretty supportive. So 
it did not lose any technicals. Now it could come down and retest, uh, could it? 52.92, that would be a buying area. Um, let's go ahead and delete these. This is the daily chart. Let me go ahead and delete this. Let me go ahead and delete the FIB. I want to clear out the chart. And what I can say is that there's going to be some sort of a squeeze play right here. Okay. So you see this pennant, and it, I might have not drawn it perfectly, um, but there's some sort of a squeeze play. And it the support it, on this box is pretty good. I just need to, in the, the news was good. I think they increased their sales over year. Um, they've had mentioned about their car um, sales after hours. I just think that this is a bullish chart. I don't regret saying it because I see what I say. I say what I see. So what do I see? Let's go ahead and take a snapshot and tell you what, exactly what I see in this thing. You see a W and a huge flag, and the breakout will be humongous. You buy this name and hold it long. And again, this is a name that you want to buy so that you enough so that you don't lose sleep over it. That's my recommendation for anybody. You want to buy a stock? Buy if, if you bought a stock and you're losing sleep over it, that means you bought too much. Okay? You can look at it this way. You can draw it any way you like, any shape you like. It's just going to look bullish in either case scenario. Okay? It's just looking for an upside, and we've drawn like fibs on this so many times, um, extensions on it so many times. We've drawn it from here back in the day, and we predicted the uh, highs, right? Um, and then uh, we can draw another extension and say, let me, let me delete this extension. We can draw another extension and go for this. Why am I clicking on it and it's not picking it up? Okay. So we can hit this range and this range. I said like 80 some dollars here, 94, that's like ultimate target. But for now, let's, I 69.88 was my, our previous uh, FIB anyways. So the 69.88 is 67 bucks. That's like, that's where it should go to. Okay. Um, let's take a look at NNDM. I remember that we've been saying NNDM in the long run has, is on a bullish uh, run, right? We've been saying that um, on the weekly. So if you look at the weekly, broke above a long resistance of a red cloud. And I said, if this comes down on a discount, you buy and forget. Now you see the curling bottom on the hourly. And the resistance is 14.8, 14.80. It closed above the resistance, okay? So that's a good sign. I think it's flagging on the four hours. The MACD is ready, Stochastics is ready, RSI is ready. I wouldn't be surprised on this name, just a quick re retracement. What, what did I, I can't see it, one second. Um, Let's delete this yellow box. We've proven that the yellow box on the top was good. We've proven that, right? So let's go ahead and redraw another one to the upside. Here. And the most bullish scenario will be at around $21. Okay. So our first 15.58 and 16.18 would be my ideal place. It will just go and do a cup and a handle and then go up for the $21 area. So that's, that's my intake on it. Again, these are the names that you invest little and forget, and they just compound over a year. Uh, and you look at it, you're like, wow, this thing is 60 bucks. I'm not saying, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about this name being 60 bucks. I'm just saying like any name. Okay? Um, overstock is another request.
Overstock, I see on the four hours, definitely a rounding bottom. It's flagging. Let's take a look at the daily. On the daily, a huge support on the 90 moving average. I believe I see another W in this and a very distinguished one. And I'll go ahead and take a picture of it and show you what it is. So you see here the neck, the head, leg one, hump, leg two, and then going up. You have flagging, so this is going to go upside. Overstock, I, I don't know how the earnings are going to be. Like the last earnings, they really killed it. And the other earnings before that, it just flew up. Um, I don't know what was the other. Yeah, went up, down, and then up again. So I, I just love this, uh, you know, drag information. You can call it a cup and handle, but love the nine-day moving average support on this. Um, if I were to draw a quick extension, I would pick this bottom, this top, and then the double bottom scenario is right here. It have already, if had, it had already reached um, the 161.8 extension. Now the next upside would be 110. The next extension you can draw would be the bottom here, the top, and then the bottom here, which would tell us um, to increase the width of this box and then put another box here. Okay. So that's our target. I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything and just keep this extension. So watch out for these levels. I think this has more upside to run. Okay. Next is Palantir was another request. Palantir, of course, was on a dip today. Now, this dip, is it a buying opportunity? Maybe it is. Maybe it's a good way to start your position. But what I'm worried about is on the daily, the MACD uh, crossover. Maybe it won't. So right now on both the MACD looks kind of bearish. It's on a it's on a verge of merging to become a cross uh, to become a bear cross. Uh, Stochastics is curling down. RSI has been cooled off a little. Overall, I would say yes. Buy the dip, and the dip can go as low as twenty nine twenty five. Maximum downside here will be around twenty eight bucks. Now, I'm not saying that, listen, I'm saying buy the dip. So that means that I'm not bearish on it. But don't act emotional and don't act stupid. Okay. There's, a difference being, there's a difference between being a technical trader and an emotional trader. You trade emotion and you pay the price and you're just going to be stuck in the stock forever. I think it's good to um, size in slowly on this name. My ultimate target here is 62 bucks. There's a reason for it, but you just have to know that you have to size in slowly. I made a mistake on this name previously by sizing heavily where I shouldn't have. So somewhere around like 28 went down as 22.50. I've had positioned in 22.50, I would have had 100% or more. So that's why you size in slowly in this name and it could hit $26. We don't know. And it could retest the cloud top. You just have to size in slowly for the next run. Now, you want me to give you, here, let me just fix this. I hate this and I complain about it every freaking video that Toss needs to fix this. So you can draw a trend line from here and you can see the maximum downside to this, the tip of the wedge would be 28, like 28.69, okay? So that's why I'm telling you to position slowly because $28 to 31 is what? Three bucks, so three divided by 31, that's a downside of another almost 10%, okay? So you just want to size in slowly for the next run up to 62 bucks, okay? Which I will. If I didn't have Fubo, actually, the first move I would have done today was maybe do a one-tenth or quarter position on Palantir. That's what I would have done. And look, connect, collect a little bit of blink. Okay? Ride was another request. Um, I have previously drawn this for some reason. I can't recollect, but is it acting technical? Yeah. So the technicality here is that the 20-day moving average was a support. Um, 2491 has been a support previously. If, this, if it does go up, I believe it could go up to 2914. Um, 
I have drawn this box, but let me let me just clear this Fibonacci and take out some of these things here. Okay. There you go. So let's go ahead and make this our first target. So this will be a target you want to look for. If we cross over this target, 36 bucks would be your next target. Now, is this a bearish stock? I don't know. I have not been paying attention on it. Now, if you ask me, the ultimate target on this one could go all the way up to um, $47. I just can't give you timing yet because I need to watch this stock. Okay. The chart doesn't look bearish. I think that the bullish the chart will turn super bullish if it can break above 29.77 and stay because it would go back to this pitchfork and then it's definitely going to hit like you know anywhere from 44 to 47 but for now i would say watch this level the first resistance is 2703 the second one is 2914 downside obviously the cloud top would be 2289 silver has been asked i don't know what changed between today and yesterday it seems like a lot and i told you when you have silver moving nine percent ten percent a day expect a down day and i said the sell volume was heavy so don't go in i said i will not be interested in silver i'm not interested in getting in now when do you want to get in silver maybe around 23.6 how far the worst case scenario would be the cloud bottom 2319. So those are the areas that you could get into. But if you want to see like silver on the long run, we could do a monthly chart on a 15 year base. So silver has been, you see this you know, pennant I drew and it just blew out of it. That's fine. That's good. It's just that on the long run, look at silver, 2012, to 2020, the halfway of 2020. So what is this? Like eight years has done nothing. Now I see a big cup and handle. Now I, I don't know how these things work, guys. I've not, I don't do like commodities or anything. Um, but let me just show you what I see on this. But I don't know if it's going to take 10 years because these things move slow. You have a cup and you can count this as a handle. I don't know. If it comes down somewhere around here and a long bullish run, it could go up to 48, but it could take you like nine years. I don't know. I can't give timing because every single one of these candles you see here is one month. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In eight months, it went up pretty hard. Now, are we going to live this squeeze? So, yeah, if I can position in somewhere around, let me tell you what, where it is. Silver, you want to position somewhere around like 22 bucks. Yeah, you can go up to 48. I don't know, like an eight, nine, one year. I don't know. It's nine years. I don't know. So I'm not an expert on commodities. Um, all I can tell you is on the 10 year, 15 year chart, yeah, it looks bullish. It looks bullish that it broke above the uh, cloud. And it looks bullish that it, you know, might test uh, 33 levels. The resistance is obviously around 25.95. Um, I am not a commodity guy and I cannot make recommendations on what I know so little. Okay. On the technical side of things, if you just look at the chart and think of silver as just being a stock technical chart, 2370 levels would be a buying opportunity. Okay. And it did even go lower than what I thought it would. So, um, SNDL. I don't know if this is a penny stock, Sundial Growers. I've recommended to a couple of my friends before the run. Now that it hit the 100%, it is flagging. So let's take a look at the daily first. On the daily, it's on a bullish run. It broke above the cloud. It could be a long-term hold. Something that you're going to put money in and don't look at it, that's what I would treat it as. Um, we can delete this extension we can delete this yellow box delete all of this so i think i recommended to a couple of my friends some time ago when it you know when it was here bouncing off but um no not even a couple days man i was like like right when we were getting into new year's that's when i thought i think i'd recommended it so 
So again, not you know very accurate. Just did it off of ballpark here. Um, nice. So if we were here, I'd say good. But right now, what you're going to look for is to break above this trend. Okay. What the? Okay. So you want to look. This is this might be a flag. Okay. Um, you want to look to break above, and then your target will be one dollar for the. $1.46. That would be almost a 50% move. Now, this is a penny stock at your own risk. On the hourly, MACD is about to cross over. Stochastics is ready. RSI is ready. It's flagging. But again, it is a penny stock. Treat it as one. On the yearly, as I said, it has broken above the um, downtrend. It is, I believe, a hemp or cannabis stock. I would just buy, I don't know how many, like treat it as an options play and just keep it for a long term. Or just a swing. Again, this is a very risk at your risk, at your own due diligence type of thing. Solo. Solo has been very supportive. Solo is good. The chart looks bullish. Now, when would I think the run will start? As soon as it's above the cloud, there's some heavy resistance. Um, there's going to be... Only if this thing works. Sometimes I click, it doesn't work. So it, it might come and retest 714, and that's where I might buy. Or, you know, I might not buy, but that's where I think it would be a buying opportunity. But there is a huge resistance here at 805, which is the cloud. You don't want to get or challenge the cloud. Trust me, you lose time. Just on the formation itself, it looks good. Like it looks bullish on the pattern. But we're above this um, trend. And if we can do a quick dip on the $7 range, $714, that's when you can do a swing play. But at this point, you know, it's no man's land, cloud top resistance on the daily. It did hang. So it did, like, if, if I delete this, so you're going to be like, no, don't delete it, but it's okay. So what I'm going to do is, again, take a picture. So on, on the, what I'm trying to say here is, if you look at the pattern, again, you see that W and a flag. But would I be, you know, putting 10% of my portfolio in this? No. 2% and just let it ride. And if it can't break above this cloud right here, so right here, just to be clear, then it could retest the 714 area and then go up. But the, there's, you can call this a cup and a handle. You can call it a W and a flag. You can call it a dragon and a flag, whatever you want to call it. Every single pattern that I see here is bullish. Um, that's all I'm going to say. But again, these stocks can pull up anything. It could just rip. Um, you know, Tesla and Neo and everything is on a break right now. It's like slow moving. You don't have that um, you know, buy, 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 you know, all these people going in. So it kind of the whole sector kind of lost its momentum, but that's what it is with uh, Solo. It'll it'll be stealth. It's a stealth operation. It'll be slowly melting down, and you'll forget about it, and then boom, from two sixty nine to thirteen six. So it might be again a slow meltdown, and it could go down and go to four dollars, and then bam, twenty dollars. So this is a name when the sector is not moving, it'll just slowly melt down. I believe this was asked again, UWMC. I think this was a merger off of a SPAC. So when this was asked to me first, I couldn't chart it because it just had a one-day chart. Now the chart is fixed. Um, RSI is picking up. MACD is picking up. Or Stochastics is picking up. MACD is about to merge on um, huge resistance. So the internal look, internals look great. A lot of sell volume, a lot of selling. I don't see too much buying. And a big resistance is nine-day moving average. The crossing, the moving day average crossovers are all bearish. 
internals are all bullish. I would say that I am clueless about the stock because nothing else here just gives me any, like if it was this, you see this cup and the handle, I'll say buy. But at this point, I don't know what happened. Like maybe the spec is messing up with the chart. Maybe the chart itself is here. I don't want to comment on this. I don't want to comment on a name again that I don't know. I need to watch. Like I'm kind of like mastered Fubo right now. I know exactly what because I've been watching it during the day. Uh, names like Palantir, I know how it moves. I know how it behaves. I know how everything goes with. I know how everything goes with Palantir or Fubo or the names that I've been trading. Okay. So right now this looks bearish. I don't see any bullish sign besides the internals. I. If you're in it, wait patiently. On the hourly, at least, it looks bullish. On the daily, I just can't say it because it got stuffed at 9-day moving average. There's a bearish crossover. The internals look ready, but I don't see any buy volume. Unless you're waiting for some kind of news, then, you know, you can wait. Again, I don't want to sound negative and cause stress to you if you own the name. That's at least the least thing that I want to do because I, I don't want to be a clown and pump up, but at the same time, I don't want you to, you know, lose hope. So max upside I see here is 1086. It can go and double dip on nine, $9.02. And again, I don't know if this was a SPAC merger. So if this is a SPAC merger, anything can happen. It would be maybe... Um, undervalued because it's under $9. I don't know, $10. I, I don't know how SPAC works, right? So we'll see. But anyhow, this is the end of our um, requested charts. Let's go back and take a look at the market, what's going on with Amazon and Google earnings. Google is definitely positive. Amazon is flat. I mean, I, I just don't see any movement on Amazon, at least from what I just noticed. But I mean, at least it's not negative, right? So yeah, just it, it, it did probably do maybe like a percent or two. Um, at least it's not negative. So that's good for the market. On the other side of things, Google um, is Google class A. No, that's class A is this one. Okay. So Google definitely ripped it up. Um, good sign for, you know, Apple, Facebook, and everything else, uh, all the ad, ad advertisements. Um, I mean, Facebook had a great earning. It's just they're not loved by the market right now. So, wow. Google seems like it's going to go. So one thing is this uh, rising wedge can be very tricky. Just watch out for that. The extension, I don't know why I'm charting Google. I'll just chart it while I'm at it. Uh, look for the 1967 levels. 50% um, FIB is 1916. So that could be a support and the resistance could be 1967. Uh, maximum upside is 2400. I don't see it going there. That's just too bullish. You just want to you just want to buy it at the bottom of the wedge and sell it at the top. That's what it is. So this is usually a bearish sign if it loses. Lose then it could go down to 1600s, okay? So that's all there is to it, and good luck trading, guys. I hope I helped you all with your requests and clear the way and put a light to it. Fubo, let's go, 4909. I know this is going to be a beast, guys. I don't want to pump the stock up, but I'm very excited because I am in it. I am emotional. But what did I say even though I was in it? I said it could test 48, and I don't want to sound too sour. And it did. And was I sad? No, because I was expecting it. Very nice cup and handle. Wow. All right. Let's go football. That's all. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And good luck with trading.